Okay. Okay, uh, we'll get started. This is uh, my presentation on the ModelCon 2022, which was held last Saturday aboard the Battleship New Jersey. Uh, it was hosted by the Philadelphia Ship Model Society in the uh, Battleship New Jersey Museum. And uh, let's see, how do I advance? <laughs> Keyboard might work. Yeah, usually on mine the, the roller works. Okay, here here's the battleship New Jersey. I took this off of a picture that was on Model Ship World, mm -hmm. and uh, beautiful ship. And the Philadelphia Ship Model Society uh, hung their banner. Uh, this is what you see when you walk up to it. It's a huge ship, yeah, and uh, that, that's a close up of the banner. So uh, we'll move on to uh, the models were, were basically displayed on the fan tail of the ship. Uh, here are some of the pictures that were set up. There were tables set up where mainly I think the clubs were set up together. Uh, if you look around, you can see uh, over here was the Washington Ship Model Society, the Hampton Roads Ship Model Society. Uh, the Ship Model Society in New Jersey. Uh, I think in the center was the Philadelphia Ship Model. By far, they had the most models on display. And uh, then there were some radio control models over uh, on both sides of the fan tail. And here are some of the uh, radio control models that were on display. That was like Task Force 50 or something like that. Yeah, I, I don't, uh, it's looking like there were several clubs. But you can see, uh, it, you know, this is, again, the fan tail of the uh, Battleship New Jersey. Nice. It was covered. Uh, they have uh, hold several events out back here. So that, go back one, um, Rylan. So that was Francine's kind of, France, Francine Serator is of our, part of our club, and she's part of Task Force 50, and um, okay. She wanted to kind of show the standing Atlantic naval fleet in squadron formation. So that's why she set them up in like this V configuration. Okay. There's some neat stories. You see how windy it was with that table. Well, it was windy. <laughs> this is across the back. Uh, the Washington Ship Model Society was set up here. They had several members that, that came. Uh, came up from Washington, and then of course Hampton Roads is down on, on the corner here. And uh, this is uh, where the Philly Club had set up. Joshua's model. Yeah, Joshua's model, and we'll see that later. Uh, this is in Ship Model Society in New Jersey. Uh, this is Chuck Passaro's model here. Uh, Tom Ruggiero's model, and uh, here's his longboat. And this is some of the more radio control models. Yeah, that, that was from the South Orange Club. Uh, that's the good participation from, uh, from these clubs. Uh, this is some more of the uh, Ship Model Society of New Jersey. Uh, it's uh, Ron Nielsen here. He's, uh, I'm sorry, it's the Ship Model. Uh, Philadelphia Ship Model Society. Uh, yeah, so Ron, yeah, so Ron Nielsen used to be part of the Connecticut Club and moved down to Bucks County, so now he's part of the Philly Club. Yeah, and on yeah. the on the extreme left side here is John Bullock's Philadelphia Ship Modelers uh, collection. Okay. Yeah, and, and it's Ron Spicer. He's from the Washington Ship Model Society. No, Ron Spicer is part of the Philly Club, and that's well, his yeah. wife. Yep, and that's his wife Jean next to him on the right hand side. Yeah, real nice people. I talked to them. They were in the uh, boardroom. So that's the San Philippe that that John Bullock is working on on that Amati uh, on that Amati stand. Right. Go ahead. We had a little entertainment. Uh, this is Eric Marshall from a Ship Model Society in New Jersey. He was uh, playing his guitar. This is before the band started up. 
And here's our setup for the Hampton Road Ship Model Society. Uh, Gene over here, Greg. And uh, we had a couple of monitors set up and displaying the, the works in progress. Gene had his uh, sub chaser here. And that's another model. Rylan? That's my long boat. Rylan. Yes. Could you back up just one, one slide real fast? United States, United States in the background. In the background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> United States is back there. Every time I look, every year it looks like it's getting worse and worse. I mean, the paint is just fading away. And this is a uh, work in progress that I'm doing. The uh, Queen Anne barge. A lot of engagement with the people on uh, the you know the visitors to the battleship would come and talk about ship modeling and and our displays and so that guy actually reached out to us he's he's actually interested in joining the club the guy with the yellow shirt that's good yeah I talked to him for probably half an hour it seems oh I'm glad you entertained him I didn't have time he wanted to he tried to come up and talk to me and i tried to be cordial but i just was really busy <laughs> you were all over the place joshua <laughs> well um, you know i'm the host you know what can i do <laughs> well, you're a good host. you were a good host we'll take a referral josh <laughs> <laughs> uh getting the washington ship model society and this is in the ward room uh this is the um uh, you know the big model of the battleship new jersey i don't know what scale that is but pretty big model and it's another one it's one eighth one eighth scale yes beautiful nine model. foot three inches long oh did we make you up jim <laughs> <laughs> uh yes you did <laughs> okay uh this gentleman here was working on this a Japanese battleship, and I forgot the name of it. I, I would have yeah, the, the Masaji. Masaji. Yep. I mean, just look at all the photo edge parts, and uh, he, he had it all laid out. And he was using the tape method here. He's going to uh, primer over that, and I guess pull up the tape to get the uh, uh, the deck plates. He had a pretty unique display because he was really trying to show like all the stuff that can be involved, the, the level of insanity that you can get to on a model like that. Yeah, and here he is right here, but uh, it, it was kind of nice in the, in the ward room. It was nice and cool, uh, air conditioned. So it yeah. uh, wasn't windy, that was for sure. And he's but, actually not affiliated with any clubs. He reached out because of our outreach and uh, I think we're gonna get him into the club as well, I hope. Good. Uh, this is Jim's uh, one two hundredth uh, Missouri. It's also it's RC. Of... All these models are RC. Uh, the, the, yeah, this is RC. I didn't realize that at the time. I mean, they're really nice models. This is one of my favorite models. I love this model. The, the Emden Cruiser. Oh yes. Okay. This was one of my favorites. I, I, this is a little 21 foot English pinnace. It's a 148 scale. Uh, there were only 20 kits made by, and Chuck Passaro made these kits. And uh, they were handed out at the uh, Northeast Joint Clubs Conference probably uh, five or six years ago. Well, maybe even longer, but uh, it's a limited edition. Again, it's, it's only 20 kits made. And I was fortunate enough to have won one, so. Uh, that's it's in my stash, but, but it, it's only about six inches long. Really small model. It's beautiful, though. <clears throat> this is a model. I didn't catch the builder's name. That's Ron uh, Spicers. Ron Spicers? Yeah. Name? Uh, the Massachusetts. Same Massachusetts. Yeah, same class, but same time period. Um, and this was a unique model in, in a ward room. I don't know what this U.S. New Jersey phase two was, 
Uh, it was a, con a concept. A concept? Yeah. I mean, was it ever planned? Wheeler. No. Wheeler? Pick up, Jim. Yes, it's just an it idea that they were going to maybe make that an aircraft carrier part of. Yeah, well, it comes so in the front. Taken off from a fan tail and gone up, or yeah, was yeah. Like carriers? Yeah, that's the white, the white in the middle of the flight deck is the uh, elevator. Yeah. Or elevator right here. I thought it was really neat, but uh, it, it never came to fruition. But uh, mm -hmm. based on your mother could love. <laughs> All right. This is another. Uh, model from a philadelphia ship model uh member and or you know liked and i know uh you know the, the, he did the copper plating and it's all turned pretty much green really nice model <laughs> yes admiralty <laughs> style went under a low bridge <laughs> and uh, this was a small model it's one 220 scale so uh uh, that one was probably only six inches long. It very small. Uh, uh, Gus Augustine is somebody up in the Midwest model shipwrights. He does these small models, but this was a nice, nice build. And here's uh, John Bullock's San Philippe, one to ninety-six scale. This model right here oh, is one. yeah, Ron Nielsen. Uh, the water is just so realistic. Uh, Ron is the director for the. Anybody notice anything about this model? Do what? Does anybody notice anything about this model? Uh, no, it's got all these sails, but it doesn't have any mainsails on it. I mean, there should be furled mainsails, shouldn't there? It, it, uh, the model, as far as build, it's a nice model. Doesn't have any sails on the main yard and on the foil. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's extremely odd. Um, yeah. 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 These, these particular sails, yeah, it is Tom Ruggiero. These particular sails were 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 done with silk span on on the in on the on the outer sides, and then it would then it had bond paper on the inside. Okay. So the way he made these sails, it would be impossible to furl them. And I don't want to, the, the model is gorgeous. The presentation is gorgeous. Nowhere would you see a ship in this kind of seaway with courses not bent on the yards. So, that's I, my, you know, my, my, my comment to Ron was that, you know, why don't you just do straight silk span and, 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 and do feral sails, you know, and, and it's a shame because the rest of the model is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It is. And it is a beautiful model. That's my whole point. Yeah. And I agree with you, you know, leaving, leaving, you know, leaving the, leaving the four and the main course, main yards bare makes no sense at all you and and actually i i if i don't know if we have a picture showing the top the top sale yards i think the same thing so you know well he did a great job on the top sales yeah I just, I just don't get the point of not having any any furrowed needs yeah yeah, yeah. I, thanks for pointing that out i yeah. i don't have that kind of an eye i didn't notice i, didn't I was too busy looking at the the variations in tone in the water. Oh, the water. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was what was interesting about it? This was in the Jim Roberts competition three years ago or two years ago, and I wasn't a judge, but I made that comment. It's sort of like, oh, but it's a gorgeous model. Yeah, it is a gorgeous model, but you know, if you get into a uh, if you get into a competition where you're going looking for the best of the yeah. best, you know, now you have to split hairs a little bit, you yeah. know. So well, yeah. Tom, this won the People's Choice Award at the, in 2019 at the Northeast Joint Clubs Conference. Right, and then 2019 was also when it was in the Jim Roberts. Yeah. And I wasn't a judge, but I made the comment to one of the judges who 
subsequently told me, oh, you're being, you're being a finicky person, blah, blah, blah. Uh, as long as we're splitting hairs, my wife is the one that pointed out, she was wondering how the, the boat managed to get so far forward being yeah. towed. Yeah, you know, well, that's, that, that's, that's true too. And the other thing is, if you look at these sails, if you spread them out all the way, um, steel has, has instructions on how you, in other words, how, how close to the attachment point on the, on the, on the yard below this, this sail should go. So, uh, you know, there's, but, but I don't want to, I don't want to rain on Ron's parade. This is a gorgeous model and it's a gorgeous display. But these are the little, these are the extra little things that could could have easily been done that would have made it a 4L model. Right. Yeah, I okay. agree with you. All right. Well, this is another one of Ron's models. And he's gonna make a seascape on this. This one is under construction. This is his uh, HMS Camilla. And uh it is under construction, and he says he plans on putting that into the water like this other one, and I think it's gonna be in a battle scene. Uh, so I'm looking forward to the completion of this model. He, knowing Ron, he'll have it done by next year. Yeah, just just so you know, this model here, there's a, there's a build log on, on MSW. This is the Camilla kit, but he's modeling it as the HMS Sphinx. Are you sure it's not the other way around? I thought it was HMS Sphinx and he's modeling it as the Camilla. I, I got to check, check again because the MSW list says Sphinx. Yeah, because I think that's the kit. Okay, maybe. I think he yeah. just named. I think he's just naming it the Camilla. Okay, whatever. This, this is a Vanguard uh, kit. Yeah, it's, it's a thing. It. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ron, Ron likes to take a kit, throw away all the wood, and replace it with you know pear. <laughs> right. Yeah, he he is he is he he really does a beautiful beautiful job. He really does. Okay, this is how do you pronounce this, Greg? I don't really know. Kule. Kule and Chata. This this is Greg's Harrington's uh, model, and that uh, beautiful model. I had a chance to really look at it close, and uh, I, I never realized. But the other side, he left natural. Uh, but uh, this side, he's he got painted, and uh, just the the paintwork, everything is really really of well-crafted model. I left the other side bare because I got tired of masking and painting. Yeah. Oh, that's not the story you tell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's, here's Gene Berger's subchaser. And uh, Gene, what scale was this? I, I, They're both 130 seconds. 130 seconds scale. The type A uh, uh, Koshi something uh, submarine. Yeah. This this is the bridge on the sub chaser. You can see Gene's detail. And one thing about Gene's models, they all tell a story. I mean, it's just if you look around, you you'll see a lot of activity. Like this guy right here, he's uh, he's questioning something. I don't know. I guess it looks like he's lost. But uh, yeah, and uh, you know these guys all working here. And you know he puts little details. There's a pelican or something sitting in a seagull, and leaves his mark on the back of the boat. That's the long boat that I entered, and for some reason, or other this thing likes to fly. It, uh, <laughs> I, you know, we were getting ready to put it, pack it up, and it went. The gust of wind caught it, and it went, you know, knocked it over, but no harm done. This is Eric Marshall's 21 foot English pinnace. This is a model shipways kit, and he he painted it up differently than what the uh, the prototype model showed. But real nice job. And this is Tom Ruggiero's uh, Midway longboat. Done a little different. Uh, didn't rig it, uh, but he's got it. You know, tied down on the. His didn't fly away. Yeah, he he uh, he put enough tape. Keep it, but the, the wind was uh, was a problem. But a very nice build. Uh, you, you know, the iron, if you look at the ironwork here, I mean, just you know, I didn't get a close up of it, but it's just really, 
really a good job. And there was an 18-year-old kid there, and he he builds models. I mean, he just keeps building and building and had quite a collection of ships. Brought 45 models. 45. <laughs> yeah, and you had to make cards for all of them, didn't you? Yeah. But, I mean, it's the future of the, of the hobby. It's, it's... Your website didn't specify a limit. Right. Maybe next year. <laughs> No, I love this kid. I give. I like this kid's enthusiasm. He's, you know, he's, uh, you know, he was very, you know, he he was a good participant last year too. And you know, I reached out to him. Yeah, he he does a good job, and hopefully he'll learn to slow down and and do a little more detailing on these models. You know, because he builds them, it looks like right out of the box. But he does good work, and uh, I mean, that's you got to give it to him. He has a nice. His mind is in the right place. Of course, it was so windy, two of his models actually blew off the table, which really was horrible. Yeah, yeah, I helped pick the pieces up because I know the feeling. Yeah. That was last year, mine went sailing off. Oh, mine went off the table last year. This year it stayed on, but. Uh, okay, here are some remote control models from the club there that, uh, this is a 1 18th scale model. Had a lot of figures on the model. It, uh, oh, you can wow. see somebody else back there taking pictures. Uh, Probably Gene. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is what is his name? Don Johnson, I think. Uh, yeah. It's uh, uh, I'm sure kind of blew so high, doesn't she? <laughs> Even had a cooler of, uh, you know, loaded. But but these guys. Three were those 3D printed models? I have no idea. Figure models, I mean. Though, I think I think you could pick up those figures. There, um, there's a German company. Yeah. me. But there's a, yeah, this this size figure you could you could you could pick up a lot of these figures. Yeah. This this guy's fishing. He's not concerned what's. Around him, it looks like. 2D, 3D. <laughs> it's a Popeye's race catamaran. That one looked nice. Huge models. I mean, uh, as you can see, this model in comparison to the other model there, this is 112 scale. And one thing I couldn't figure out, it looked like the one is upside down. I, I, I don't, you know, I'm so used to seeing race cars where you can read the number head on, so that. That's just something that struck me odd. But uh, the captain knows what <laughs> yes. Good that you picked out that detail. <laughs> uh, I, well, I've learned to detail, you know, look at stuff that uh, another you know, these this is another RC boat. Oh, this one right here was a uh, New York pilot boat. I think it was a Dumas kit or and the guy converted over to a Coast Guard uh, boat and that's another okay tard wardwell who's a member of the philly club uh he, he did this real nice uh cross section of a gunnery station nice flanking mike can weaver you go, can you go back to, to this one yeah very strange guns. It's a thick tail. Oh, the, uh, yeah. Oh, the hatchet. And it's, yeah, they're 135th scale, but uh, they, they look a little, little thick. A little thick. They are too thick. There's the, there's the hull. Here's a model of the Olympia by Mike Weaver. I don't know what scale this was. Uh, I was looking at when, when I was taking pictures, I always took a picture of the the registration card, and some of the people left off the uh, scales of their model. And Mike also did the Oregon. Mike didn't even give me a list of what he was bringing. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
And this one was just marked Iowa Battleship. At, uh, but he does nice work. Uh, you could tell. And these two didn't have names on them, but uh, they were cased together. It's uh, it's, it's supposed to be the hood. Is it the hood? It's to be the hood. Okay, I don't know which one is in the back. That's, that's the Bismarck. Okay. Bismarck and Hood. Mike likes to do a lot of comparative presentations. Mm hmm. But he does not really nice work. It's, uh... And then this is a Hunley, a uh, really nice model. Uh, I wonder if that's a resin kit, but. Uh... You know, it's he, not a kid. He scratch built that. Scratch built. Uh, you know, it's, they look pretty big. That's why I was thinking. Yeah. Uh, but the figures on it, you know, he he did a good job of painting the figures. This kind of didn't come out the way I wanted it to come out, but uh, it was a real nice Johnny Reb figure there. Yeah, Mike's the kind of guy to take like a water bottle and turn it into a model. Yeah. Okay, this was a, a Liberty ship model, real nice display, a lot of history on the uh, Liberty ships, talking about they made 2,700 of them in, from 1941 to 1945 uh, to replace the ships that were sunk by the Ger uh, German U-boats. And uh, he, he added a little by these are the pennies from the years 1941 to 45. And, you know, here are some of the... Um, steel pennies and all but you know nice nice little presentation there's a little thing the what i read, I read the other day what is the guy that owns uh his yacht oh bezos is yeah bezos the one that he tried to sneak out of holland yeah. well apparently his yacht is about the length of the vector Here's a cargo ship, but uh, I don't know who built that, but there's a bunch of other ship models. That... Okay, uh, here's... Yeah, go ahead. I think those are all Mike Weavers, aren't they? Yeah, they're, I think they're all Mike Weavers. There's no name tags on them. It, uh... Yeah, the, that those are Mike Weavers. Nice sub in the back, too, that was cased up. But, uh... It was, you know, and this is a wicked winch from Joshua, 150th scale, modeled in progress. And I do have furled sails on the lower courses. <laughs> yeah. The way it should be. Okay. All right. This is uh, a tugboat Carol J by Joe Jordan. Joe is uh, a really nice guy. Got to know him over the years, see him up in the Northeast Joint Clubs Conference, real nice guy to speak with. I, I had a real nice conversation when I was uh, just past Saturday up there. But I always enjoy seeing Joe. He's, he's a good modeler. And uh, he's got a nice collection of crisscrafts, which you'll see here in a minute. But uh, here's, here's a couple of his crisscrafts that he does, but uh, these I think are RC. They're all RC and Joe had the goal of building the whole crisscraft line that Dumas uh -huh. was putting out. So what you see there is the, the barrel back is the one right in the front and then the Typhoon. Typhoon and he, yeah. he adds, he nickel plates, uh, he makes them, uh, a lot of his own parts and nickel plates them. Yeah, good modeler. He's. Again, some of Joe Jordan's work. Uh, so Dumas sub chaser. Yes. That 19 foot runabout is my dream boat. This one's called the Pipes Dream. Huh? Nice. Nice. He said his aunt owned that actual actual boat. Pipes wow. Dream. It's a 19 foot barrel barrel stern runabout. Yeah. One thing about the Mariners Museum here is they have a collection of, uh, I think, all the plans and everything from the Chris Craft Company that are housed here. And this is Tugboat Baltimore. Uh, Joe 
Gradonis. Gradonis. I don't know him, but uh, you know, looked like a nice model RC. Joe does a lot of great scratch work. Yeah, he, absolutely no online presence. And you know, the funny thing about Joe is he builds a lot from photographs. And this mm -hmm. is actually a boat that he rode on and then made a model of it based off of a photograph. What this room seeing? Oh, oh the, the, this one here? The no, the rub, the rub seeing that you were just showing. Yeah, Th this is, he said, was the first uh, steamboat. Uh, first attempt at putting a steam engine in a boat. Yeah, and what's interesting is that the steam engine sucks water in and then pushes water out the back. That's how it propels. Jet, jet propulsion, he put, yes, on a, on a card. Yeah, no, but uh, nice, you know, that's a scratch built model, 124 scale. Signing water. Yeah. And this is a little uh, 18th century longboat by John Heller. We got a couple of of these in our uh, display, in our modeling booth, but uh, I think this guy did a really nice job on that. Uh, that was his first model. Yes, that's what he said. It was really, a, a, did a nice job. That, that's another picture of it showing the side, and, uh, and that model is, uh, you know, from one end to the other, counting bowsprit, probably nine inches long. Uh, this is uh, HMS Tartar. I don't know who built that, but I think these are radio control. Oh, this was the one that the fleet you were saying. Yeah, these uh, are mostly Francine's models. You know, really nice work. They're all scratch built. Wow. It. Uh, this is one from Joe Jordan. Uh, he again is. Uh, see the good work that he does nicely rigged a lot of the steel navy ships weren't rigged that much but uh, joe made sure that everything was uh, should be as it is submarine i have no idea who did that that's fred signors yeah, u-boat u-47 philadelphia club the PT and that's all yeah that's all scale. Oh, you yeah, you got his. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, PT-109, Fred Signor. I don't know what scale that is, but it was pretty large. And you Fred can see Sig the rate. Yeah, Fred Signor is a machinist by trade. Okay, here was a, a RC battleship that uh, I was shown the inside of it. You know, that, that's the inner workings. And this is a what goes on top. And here it is all put together. So, but yeah, RC, big, you know, y'all got several RC clubs up that way. They said that model's like 20 some years old at least. Might be the Sterling Cat. Wow. Okay, this is a Calypso by Don Russell. Now, Don drove all the way from Alabama to uh, come to the show. He, I think he had some other business up here, but he did uh, make it to the show. He's on Model Ship World and a uh, real nice guy, but I thought this was a real nice model. And uh, this, this is the stern portion of the Calypso. I guess that's a pad for a helicopter. And. Uh, I thought he detailed it out pretty good. That's part of the bow. Don't know what that was. It didn't have a name, uh, identification card on that. I was New England schooners. Kind of looks like it. And this one, I, I don't know what the use. O nine O dash nine meant, and then it's you know SS seventy. It's an O class. O class. Yes. It's marked on the conning tower. But uh, that's from the Washington Ship Model Society. He told me 
he told the model builder told me uh, Richard told me that he actually they were surveying this ship. They actually found this particular submarine. Um, they were trying to figure out why it sank. Um, mm-hmm. They did find, and they did find that the section um, from aft of the sail towards the bow was intact while the entire remainder of the submarine was crushed. So, uh-huh. so, so that says that the, the bow got flooded and the stern um, the stern was 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 together and basically went below crush depth and that's it done. A lot of history. Yeah, yeah. Okay, another model from uh, Washington member, uh, USS Pittsburgh, uh, Lou Hooser. He's uh, you know one seven hundred scale too. That was a small model, but very nicely painted up, detailed. Okay, this is the HMS Winchelsea from Chuck Passaro, and that's quite a model to see in person. It, uh, you know, he's doing a build log, and there, I think it's about at least 50 or more build logs on model ship world, and every one of them is, seems to be just as nice as this, but uh, this is a master at work here. He's just about done with it, too. Yeah. It, it, he, he almost, uh, you, you heard the story about coming to the show where they had to hit the brakes real hard and the, the boat went flying forward. Yeah. They almost, uh, you know, had a rebuild, but everything survived okay. But I mean, just the, the carbons here, is, I mean, this display case that he, you know, is just beautiful. <clears throat> this is actually the same as what's on the stern, the, the carvings. What's what's interesting about it is this is this is made almost entirely from uh, Alaskan yellow cedar, and mm-hmm. you would you would really be amazed how light this model is. <laughs> yes, and another thing too is Chuck is the uh, the owner of Siren Ship Model Company, and he 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 makes blocks, ropes, uh, several other kits, and uh, the. Uh, Rope, rope, walk, serving machine. But this is some of the deck details, and uh, he's copying it right after uh, a model from the National Maritime Museum, and uh, he's he's building it just like the way it was built back uh, in the 1700s. Actually, the detail he's putting in is even more than the than the model that's 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 there. For example, if you see the, if you see the covers, the covers on the pumps, those individual planks, even the prototype doesn't have that. Wow, it's it, he's a master at it. I mean, the the paintwork right here is uh, just. Uh, you know, <laughs> Really beautiful. The guy does have an art degree, though. <laughs> yeah, he is. A, that was, he was an artist that went into computers, and uh, and then when uh, the recession hit back two thousand, yeah, ten years ago, he's went into business for himself. All of it's this, history. all of this paintwork here, he uses artist acrylics in the tubes. Mm-hmm. And he puts mo- he puts probably a, 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 almost a dozen coats on it, if not more. It's a, a it's, dozen uh, very a dozen very light coats. Amazing, oh. amazing work. I mean, just look at the uh, uh, you know the the, the yeah, windows. The type for all your models. Look at the windows. Yeah, look how fine the frames are. Compared to most other models, yeah. Oh, there, there's a scale. The shingles on the quarter gallery, okay. He actually sliced them off another piece, and those those are individual shingles. Hmm. As much as anything else, I was impressed how even all the full seam hull plank seams are. 
there's no variation in the in the width. There's no gaps anywhere. It's just yeah. Very he, precise. He, he definitely sets a standard high for uh, any of the other modelers, but uh, this work here, the, the carvings are just uh, unreal. And he, you know, he made, uh, I think these carvings were done out of uh, China, and then he, uh, the know. guy makes them, uh, he can, you can either get them in the uh, computer car. That's right, CNC. The, the, the Chinese have developed a way to CNC carve all this stuff in boxwood, but you can also buy them in resin. And Chuck is distributing them, but yeah, look at the picture, the, the, the frames right here. It's uh, just, uh, I, I mean, this picture, you know, you got to realize this is a 148 scale model. I mean, it, it just, uh, this is a really close up, but uh, beautiful model. And, uh, you know, this kind of, uh, we, we had some entertainment. We had a sea shanty. Sea shanty. Sea shanty uh, band. And uh, they were, you know, if y'all remember Bob Common singing sea shanty songs at the uh, banquet, uh, he would have fit right in with these guys. Uh, they were quite entertaining and uh, just something different from last year. They also had a little bar set up over here. and. So you can enjoy enjoy a, a good beverage while li listening to the, them sing and play music. And uh, it was a fun time. I mean, it really was. And uh, the Philly Club really deserves a lot of credit for, for putting on this show. And I know, Joshua, you work hard on this. And uh, every time I said something to one of your members about it, they said, oh, oh, well, Joshua's the one who did it all. So really appreciate what you did. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, you, you probably have generated a lot of interest for some of the members uh, for, I mean, for possibly future members or people to get into the hobby, but uh, we do appreciate what you do. And with that, uh, that guy just, in the just, just, just keep coming to my parties. Okay. That's, that's all. That's how you can show your appreciation. Yeah. <laughs> right. That guy in the center needs a comment. He deserves a pat on the back oh, okay. standing there in that heavy coat all day because yeah. it was a little bit warm. And this is when we left the uh, relieving the ship there. That's that's Tom Ruggiero coming down the, uh, the walkway. But it was a fun time. Uh, the weather couldn't, you know, it was really nice. Uh, it was nice, cool breeze. It was breezy, but I mean, it was cool, and uh, we, we didn't burn up, and uh, just a just a good time all around. But that's the end of my presentation. So if you go to um, Model Ship World, there's a there's a, a thread on there, and you can find you can probably find it on YouTube as well. But Mike Ellington, the Sea Watch owner, um, yes. member of the New Jersey Club, he made a YouTube video to music of the Model Con. It's like a little video picture presentation. If you guys want to go check it out, the link to that is in our logbook. Yeah, Mike Mike Ellison, by the way. Oh, sorry, I said his name wrong. Yeah, uh, Mike Ellison, I, I sent him an email to, to I was hoping he could join us today because he said he wants to attend our meetings. And uh, so I sent him a link to the, the Zoom and all, but, uh, but that's, you know. If you signed up on, on, his, uh, on his website, uh, he's on vacation with his, uh, with his first officer this week, but uh, his boatswain is offering 25% off of everything on his website. Oh. Do you watch books? Do you watch books? So 25%, that's a big deal. Yeah, I heard he's going to Maine. Maybe he'll buy a uh, blue jacket. <laughs> I, I know Nick is trying to uh, find a buyer up there. If anybody wants to, to run a model ship uh, kit company, blue jackets for sale. Well, if I were 50 years younger. Yeah, that's, that's it. But anyway. Been a fun meeting. Well, I, I really, I really appreciate everyone that comes, and um, you know, I, I really enjoy just hanging out with the other modelers personally. Um, you know, not as much patronage as I was hoping for, but you know, I have a few ideas of maybe how to change it up again next year um, that I'm kind of thinking through, and I want to work with the battleship to see if maybe you know there's a 
maybe way, you know, ways we could still improve it again next year. But, um, you know, as long as people keep coming, I'll, I'll keep putting it together. Okay. The tech repair made it a little bit hard to get the grand tail. Wasn't it was even worse the year before. Yeah. So, Jim, are you still there? Jim Wheeler? I don't think so. Uh, all right. Well, good night. <laughs> all, right. all right. Thanks, everyone, for coming to the meeting, whether you're yeah. here or okay. online. For y'all guys online, just want to let you know that uh, there, I don't. We won't have a Zoom meeting next month. Uh, we we have a picnic. So, hey, hey, Ryland, can I can I get this presentation or the pictures? Uh, I'll be glad to try to email it. If you don't, I'll send you a a, a thumb drive. All right, it's in PowerPoint. We will, folks. All right. Thanks. Sure. Hey, Greg.